The headquarters of Russia's Black Sea Fleet is ablaze following a Ukrainian missile strike. Footage surfaced online shortly after the strike, showing flames and black smoke coming from the building in Sevastopol on the Crimean Peninsula, which Russia annexed illegally back in 2014. Russia's defense ministry said initially that one serviceman had been killed. They then amended that statement to say the person was missing. They went on to say that uh, Russian air defense systems shot down five of the missiles. Well, straight to the Ukrainian capital then, where we find our correspondent, Nick Connolly. Welcome, Nick. What more can you tell us? Well, we've seen images just in the last half hour or so of the sun going down now in Sevastopol and the smoke continuing, this fire seemingly still not out. There's not much in the way of access. The Russian authorities in the occupied Sevastopol have basically shut down the town centre. Uh, it's all cordoned off so locals can't go there. There's been lots of ambulances seen, lots of debris still strewn as for the casualty numbers. Uh, there's an expectation that those will rise given the number of people that worked in that building, but so far we don't have much in the way of hard facts. But this really comes as you know, part of a string of attacks in recent days. We've had attacks on uh, Russian military airfields in Crimea, also command points that had been uh, basically dug into the mountains that have been very heavily protected, but were attacked using Western-built uh, cruise missiles. So a real sense now that Crimea is under attack by Ukrainian forces day after day. And why do you think uh, there has been this increase in attacks on uh, occupied Crimea? When you speak to military experts here in Kiev, they say that basically Crimea has been turned into a heavily fortified uh, Russian uh, kind of... Uh carrier, like a carrier uh, ship off Ukraine's coast since 2014, since that annexation took, part, took place. And we've seen current attacks, you know, all the way through this war on Odessa, particularly the southern parts of Ukraine. And so basically taking out that fleet, making Russia move those ships to other ports further away from Ukraine's Black Sea ports, that will really take the heat off those cities. It also forces Russia to concentrate its air defences that are currently protecting its troops in the south of Ukraine uh, in Crimea, so that makes things easier for Ukraine's counteroffensive. But it's also about the logistics, because right now the vast majority of supplies to those garrisons in Zaporizhia and Donetsk, they're all coming through Crimea. Crimea. So the next step will be the attack on that bridge connecting Crimea with the Russian mainland. So that's the expectation here in Kiev. Thanks for that, Nick. Uh, Nick Connolly in Kiev. Let's get more on this from Stephen Blank. He's a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute's Eurasia program and joins us from Washington, D.C. Welcome to DW. And um, what does this missile strike mean for the Russian war effort? Well, it's a defeat to be perfectly blunt about it. It shows that the Russians still have inadequate defenses against Ukrainian uh, anti-ship and drone uh, artillery. And what's more, that they don't seem to be uh, able to cope with the threat that Ukraine poses to them. It also indicates that the naval uh, strategy that has been, is another indication that the naval strategy you, uh, Russia has followed is falling apart. Uh, apart from all the other threats that the uh, your correspondent had mentioned, the naval uh, aspect of the war was that the Black Sea Fleet was supposed to blockade Ukraine. That blockade is falling apart. Uh, Ukraine is now being able to send ships through a corridor in the Black Sea with commercial wares for export. It is uh, destroying Russia's logistics and its uh, intelligence capabilities in Crimea. And the overall objective is to make Crimea untenable as a place to stay and, and work for Russia so, right. and to conduct uh, military operations. So. And, and why is uh, Russia's uh, naval effort falling apart, as you describe it? You know, that's a very hard question to answer. Uh, obviously, they don't take the Ukrainian capabilities seriously enough still. Uh, they don't have proper air defense. That's uh, quite obvious. And uh, they're leaving these buildings, to all extents and purposes, unprotected. Uh, there are other examples where they have failed to uh, move uh, adequately with regard to naval operations as well. Uh, they planned amphibious operations at the beginning of the war, and those never came off. The uh, Navy just doesn't have an answer to Ukrainian anti-ship and artillery and drones. Okay. And that's so 18 given... months to the war.
So given, uh, given that, is this attack uh, on Crimea, this latest attack on Crimea, what difference will it make to what, uh, what Moscow is doing navally? Moscow is already moving, trying to move the fleet out of range of Ukrainian artillery, artillery I mean, uh, missiles and drones. So that makes it uh, harder, as your, as, Nick, as your correspondent pointed out, to uh, attack Ukraine with missiles uh, because it, those ships are now further away. It also makes it much more difficult to enforce this blockade of Ukraine's grain trade, which they tried again uh, in July when they broke the grain agreement with uh, Turkey, UN, and uh, Ukraine to uh, enforce that. It also makes it harder for them to sustain the logistics capabilities for their forces in South Ukraine. So the fact of the matter is that there doesn't seem to be a viable naval strategy right now coming out of Moscow. Right. And we haven't heard uh, much from Moscow in response to this attack. Just a, a quick summary of uh, casualties. Um, does that tell us anything? Yes, it means they were taken by surprise and they don't have an answer for it. Uh, and that uh, probably Putin is looking for somebody's head to roll as a result of this, because this is a terrible failure. This is the main headquarters building of the Black Sea Fleet, and it appears to have been undefended. Thank you for that. Uh, Stephen Blank from the Foreign Policy Research Institute. You're welcome. Uh, we'll hear now from uh, our Russia analyst, Konstantin Egert. Welcome, Konstantin. Uh, what sort of reaction has there been from Moscow? Well, not much, frankly speaking. Mostly what we've seen are reactions from the uh, local sort of occupation authorities appointed by, uh, by the Russian government. Um, they were actually, some of them were saying just enemies that struck the Black Sea Fleet. Uh, the Black Sea Fleet headquarters, uh, another person saying, oh, it's the Ukrainian missile. So it's, even, even, even there, it's a bit of a confusion. But uh, what we do know is that uh, basically the building is damaged very significantly. And reports from the scene uh, in uh, local telegram channels are saying uh, that a dozen or probably more uh, ambulances uh, were seen around the building ostensibly evacuating uh, the wounded. But there is no, not yet a major Kremlin reaction to that, although I agree with Nick Connolly, who spoke earlier uh, on the program. It is uh, probably not so much a military hit, but a significant PR disaster uh, for the Kremlin. I think I, I would agree with that assessment. Right. Uh, and uh, perhaps you could expand on that for us. Why, why is uh, the, uh, the Black Sea uh, fleet there and Sevastopol, uh, why is that uh, so symbolic for uh, Russia? Well, uh, look, the annexation of Crimea uh, was, uh, remains actually, the linchpin of Vladimir Putin's rule for the last, well, whatever, nine years. And uh, the idea that the Crimea is very safe, it's Russian forever. It's something that the Russian propaganda is pumping 24-7 uh, to the Russian public. But this uh, headquarters, although I think that the real sort of coordinating center uh, the, the real military headquarters of the fleet must be somewhere else, probably somewhere where it's safer. But this kind of bureaucratic headquarters, uh, visible to everyone, known to everyone in the Crimea and in Sevastopol, uh, now has been reduced to rubble. Uh, this does not show, frankly speaking, uh, in terms of PR, that this is Russian forever. More of it shows that Ukrainians are pretty free to strike there. And I think that uh, symbolically, that's a very, must be a very unpleasant thing for the crowd. Right. So from, from what you, you, you and Nick have said, it doesn't look as though this missile strike uh, on that base is necessarily going to affect a Russian military strategy. Look, you'd rather ask probably someone who knows the disposition, the, 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 the deployment scheme of uh, Russian military in the Crimea, but I think it's not the first time that the Ukrainians tried to strike the headquarters. I presume that after the previous attempts, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, government uh, in uh, the Russian government, the Russian military commanders would have probably uh, removed everything that's sensible from this building if it ever existed there. Thank you for that, Konstantin. That's uh, DW's uh, Russia analyst, Konstantin Egert. And we can now speak to military analyst Marina Moran from King's College in London. Welcome. Good to see you again. Now, why are we seeing Ukraine step up these attacks on Crimea in recent weeks? 
Good evening, Nicole. Well, there are several reasons for that. First of all, Ukraine doesn't have the same naval capabilities as Russia does. So what Ukraine is trying to do is degrade Russia's Black Sea fleet capabilities. And specifically, there are two main aims, military aims for that matter. The, um, the Black Sea fleet was used to fire Calibra missiles on Odessa. So it would be obviously important for Ukraine to, to reduce uh, the risk of an attack on the Odessa port. That is connected with the other reasoning for that. And the Odessa port is being used to export Ukrainian grain. And Ukraine has seen some difficulties, especially with a, with a Poland and some other countries imposing a ban on Ukrainian grain. It's important for Ukraine to sustain its economy, therefore neutralizing or at least reducing the capabilities of the Black Sea fleet. It wants to ensure that its vessels can get to their destination. And of course, it has some psychological effect as well, showing that, especially as Zelensky is asking for long-range missiles from the United States, showing the capabilities of the Ukrainian armed forces to precisely strike the Russians in Crimea, despite the air defenses and despite the difficulties that Ukrainian air force is having. Yeah, this was a strike very much to the heart of Russia's military operation in Crimea. So how come Russia is so vulnerable on a piece of land that is so important to them? It is an interesting question indeed, because Russia has claimed to have advanced air defenses, most notably the S-400 deployed to Crimea, deployed to Sevastopol um, in order to protect as a peninsula. The reasoning could be is the fact that the Ukrainian Air Force used the Storm Shadow or Scout missile, which is a cruise missile, which has a different trajectory and by itself is much more difficult to intercept on the one hand. On the other hand, we have to look at the terrain of uh, Sevastopol and th there are mountains. So when the operator of the air defense system sees a missile on the radar, when it comes from um, out of the mountain, so to say it might be too late and uh, they just don't have enough time to react. And the other option is, of course, that the, the uh, air defense systems were overloaded. So it wasn't just one missile fired. And uh, that is apparently what happened. So taking all those factors combined, it becomes more and more difficult for Russia to defend Crimea and to defend its um, Black Sea Fleet headquarters, putting it on the defensive, of course. Yeah. We've spoken a lot about Ukraine's slow counteroffensive. Now, could these missile strikes on Russian-held territory be another way to weaken the enemy? And if so, could it be successful? We have to look at the counteroffensive as a multifaceted operation. So what is happening in Zaporizhia right now is not the only point of contact. We have to look at all the other sectors of the front, um, such as Klishevka and Andreevka, where the Ukrainian forces had some success and they are trying to encircle the Russian forces or partially encircle the Russian forces in Bakhmut. Simultaneously, we have the drone attacks uh, around Belgorod. We have drone attacks aimed at um, critical infrastructure aimed at um, ammunition depots um, in order to reduce Russia's capabilities in uh, to uh, continue with its special military operation, so-called special military operation. And we also have those attacks on Crimea, which all in conjunction should create uh, synergies and should create effect, especially on Russia's capability to resist. It should make a dent also in, in availability of Russia's ammunition supplies. Yeah. So I, I think um, integrated into this whole operation, these attacks are important, but um, the overall effect will be decisive. And right now, it's just one portion which is successful. It's military analyst Marina Moran from King's College London. Thank you. Thank you very much.